Hecate, a figure in Greek mythology, is a goddess revered for her dominion over magic, witchcraft, crossroads, and the night. Depicted as a triple deity, her symbolism reflects a connection to crossroads and her adeptness in traversing the realms of the living, the dead, and the divine. The multifaceted role of Hecate is evident in her presence across numerous ancient texts and stories. Hecate, along with Helios, emerged as one of the few surviving titans following the Titanomachy, the war that established Zeus and the Olympian pantheon as the ruling powers. As the ancient titan deities gradually faded away, Hecate's enigmatic presence became more entrenched in the fabric of ancient Greek religion. Hecate's connection with mystical realms, such as magic and witchcraft, defied conventional boundaries. Beyond being the goddess associated with dark aspects, she held sway over crossroads, necromancy, ghosts, moonlight, sorcery, and a myriad of other domains. Despite this expansive influence, Hecate garnered significant respect from both the other Greek gods and her devoted followers on Earth. She is presented as a neutral entity. While we typically link concepts of evil with fantastical elements like zombies, vampires, witchcraft, and ghosts in fiction, we seldom consider things from their point of view. Consequently, this concealed aspect compels us to contemplate based on what provides us with the greatest comfort and mental assurance. Being the Greek goddess of crossroads further cements Hecate's neutral stance, allowing her to embody both subjective notions of good and evil. She refrains from committing to a singular path and instead stands resolutely atop the boundaries, refusing to lean towards any specific side. As the supreme titaness presiding over the mystical, Hecate wielded formidable authority over the domains of magic and witchcraft. While her influence waned in the daytime when Helios radiated the strongest light, Hecate's powers surged during the night. This is why she was depicted as Selene, the Greek moon goddess, in ancient vase paintings. Hecate served as a veil between the mortal realm and the supernatural, earning her a prominent role as the goddess of magic in regulating malevolent spirits in the underworld. The name Hecate originates from the Greek word Hecatos, believed to be a distant and obscure epithet linked to Apollo, the Greek god of music, signifying someone who operates from a considerable distance. Hecate entered the world within the esteemed realms of Perses and Asteria as a second-generation titan goddess. Perses, the former, held sway over both destruction and peace, often identified in Greek mythology as the forebearer of the Persians. Asteria, in contrast, was a more tranquil deity, her name literally translating to star, possibly alluding to her beauty and a narrative involving Zeus. Yet, her beauty failed to shield her from Zeus's unusual desires, the thunderous god relentlessly pursued this lone goddess, taking the form of an eagle over city walls. Fortunately, she eluded him by transforming into a quail and soaring into the sky. Descending like a star into the sea, she metamorphosed into an island, successfully evading Zeus' perilous advances. It was in this transformation that she encountered Perses, the Dark Goddess made her stylish debut in the narratives of Greek mythology as penned by Hesiod in his work, Theogony. Hesiod's words highlight this introduction. Asteria conceived and bore Hecate, whom Zeus, the son of Kronos, honoured above all. He bestowed splendid gifts upon her, granting her a share of the earth and the unfruitful sea. Hecate received acclaim in the starry heavens and was greatly honoured by the deathless gods. To this day, whenever someone on earth offers rich sacrifices and seeks favour in accordance with tradition, they invoke Hecate. Swiftly does great honour befall the one whose prayers the goddess receives favourably. She bestows wealth upon them, for the power is vested in her. Hesiod not only extols Hecate, but also underscores Zeus's profound respect for her. The recurrent emphasis on Hecate's significance in the Pantheon 
suggests that Hesiod's native region might have had traditions venerating the goddess of magic. Hecate frequently found herself entwined with other deities in the Greek pantheon, primarily owing to her shared dominion over specific aspects of the world. An example of this intertwining was her association with Artemis, the Greek goddess of hunting, given Hecate's role as the goddess of witchcraft. Rhea, the Titan mother goddess, also shared a connection with Hecate due to the mystical nature associated with childbirth. Additionally, Hecate was linked to Selene, a significant deity representing the moon. The moon being a vital symbol in magic and witchcraft provided a rationale for the merging of Hecate and Selene. Beyond these connections, Hecate maintained ties with various nymphs and minor goddesses across the ancient Greek realm. Hecate defied the stereotypical image of a witch, emerging as a multifaceted entity within the Greek pantheon. Her representation encompassed three distinct bodies, forming a trifold embodiment that underscored the divine significance of the number three. Athenian potters immortalized this triple-bodied depiction in time, capturing it in the statuettes they meticulously crafted. In other portrayals, the goddess Hecate is often depicted holding two torches, symbolizing her role as a guide through obscure situations. Her typical attire included a knee-length skirt and leather greaves, aligning with the portrayal of Artemis and reinforcing the parallels between the two goddesses. Due to her affiliation with the occult, the goddess is linked to various symbolic representations that manifest in a roster of sacred animals and plants directly associated with the deity of witchcraft. Hecate was believed to prefer offerings of garlic, closely linked with her worship. Additionally, she is occasionally linked with the cypress tree, symbolizing death and the underworld, making it sacred to various chthonic deities. The canine depicted alongside her is Hecuba, the wife of King Priam during the Trojan War. When Troy fell, Hecuba leaped from the sea, prompting Hecate to transform her into a dog to facilitate her escape from the besieged city. Dogs, known for their loyalty, were often positioned as guardians in doorways to prevent the entry of unwelcome intruders. Hecate's connection with dogs could also be rooted in the myth of Cerberus, the infernal three-headed dog guarding the gates of the underworld. Another creature associated with Hecate was the polecat, but not just any ordinary one. This particular animal had a unique origin, having once been the unfortunate form of a human soul named Galinthius. Galinthius, a maiden aiding Alcmena during childbirth, incurred the wrath of the goddess Ilithia when attempting to alleviate Alcmena's prolonged labor pains. In retaliation, Ilithia transformed Galinthius into a polecat. Cursed to lead a vexing life as a polecat, Ilithia added another layer of misfortune by condemning her to perpetually give birth in a distressing manner. Hecate, known for her compassion, took pity on Galinthius. She adopted the polecat as her own, cementing its status as her symbol and sacred animal. Despite the common portrayal of the goddess of magic as malevolent, this instance reflects her underlying compassionate nature. Hecate found symbolic representation in various elements, including serpents, poisonous plants, and keys. The serpent served as a symbol of her expertise in witchcraft, with snakeskin being a notorious component often associated with testing magical abilities. Poisonous plants, such as hemlock, symbolized toxic substances widely used as poisons in ancient Greece. Her association with keys carried a symbolic meaning, signifying her presence in the realms between the supernatural and reality. The keys hinted at the idea that Hecate dwelled in liminal spaces concealed from mortal sight, accessible only when equipped with the correct key. Gigantomachy, as the name implies, was the conflict between the giants and the Olympians in Greek mythology. In these tales, Giants embodied extraordinary mortal strength, posing a formidable threat to the Olympian deities, despite not necessarily towering over them. This rivalry escalated into a full-scale war, 
In the midst of the battle, Hecate naturally joined the fight. Her adversary, Cletius, a giant specifically crafted to counter her powers, aimed to neutralize all of Hecate's abilities, rendering her defenseless on the battlefield. Undeterred, the goddess of magic defied the odds and played a pivotal role in aiding the other gods and goddesses in vanquishing the formidable giant. Hecate achieved this by exploiting the giant's pronounced vulnerability to fire. Her triumphant act earned deep reverence, even from Zeus. Recognizing Hecate as a force not to be underestimated, the other gods soon followed suit in honoring her. Homer's epic Odyssey introduces Circe, a mystical maiden situated in the midst of the sea, who plays a crucial role in the narrative. Circe offers vital guidance and counsel to Odysseus and his crew, ensuring their safe passage through the perilous seas. Circe, an enchantress of notable prowess, is renowned for her ability to transform those who oppose her into beasts. Additionally, she delves into the realm of dark arts and is recognized for her expertise in magical herbs and substances. In some Greek tales, Circe is portrayed as the daughter of Hecate, adding a familial dimension to her mystical background. According to these accounts, Hecate married Aeetes, the king of Colchis, and bore Circe as their offspring. Although variations exist in the retelling of this story, Hecate shared an association with Selene, the Greek goddess of the moon. As the most prominent source of light on particularly dark nights, the moon played a commanding role. Consequently, Hecate became intertwined with Selene, wielding two torches that symbolized her ominous authority during the witching hour. This connection solidified her role as the goddess of the night and the radiant orb in the nocturnal sky. Her associations extended across a diverse spectrum, encompassing realms from magic to confined spaces. This diversity in responsibilities has dispersed her roles widely. While she maintained a close connection to intricate and liminal spaces, with ancient Greeks linking her to boundaries. Positioned at the juncture of polar opposites within the same concept, she existed between reality and dreams, amidst light and darkness, on the border of morality and immorality, and at the threshold between mortals and immortal gods. This liminal nature solidified her role as a deity resembling a veil, perpetually overseeing those who tread the boundaries. As the goddess of witchcraft, Hecate was closely linked to magic, dark arts, sorcery, and rituals. However, her powers were not wielded to bring about doom upon those targeted. Remaining neutral, she merely oversaw the elements, ensuring they never spiralled out of control. One of the most notorious incidents in Greek mythology involves the kidnapping of Persephone, the goddess of spring, by Hades, the god of the underworld. Hades, in consultation with Zeus, devised a plan to abduct Persephone without informing her mother, Demeter. Zeus offered his support to Hades and wished him success. As Hades carried out the abduction, Persephone's pleas for help reached the ears of two prominent figures in Greek mythology. Helios, situated above the skies in his golden chariot, was one of them. The other was Hecate, taken aback by the sound of agonizing screams. Upon realizing her daughter's absence, Demeter spared no effort in her search, scouring every corner of the planet in vain. Persephone was nowhere to be found, as Hades had clandestinely returned to the underworld with her. In a moment of despair, when Demeter was on the brink of giving up hope, Hecate emerged, bearing a torch, and disclosed what she had observed on the day of Persephone's abduction. While Hecate hadn't witnessed Hades kidnapping Persephone, she had heard the goddess of spring cry out. Upon reaching the scene, Hecate found no one present. Informing Demeter of this, she guided the grieving mother to someone who could offer genuine assistance. Hecate led Demeter to Helios, whose radiant rays illuminated the sorrowful mother. Having witnessed the entire incident, Helios revealed to Demeter that Hades was the true abductor 
and that Zeus played a significant role in the event. In the ensuing narrative, Demeter unleashes her fury upon the world as a form of rebellion against the god of thunder. As the goddess of agriculture, she strips the lands of their fertility, ushering in waves of famine upon mankind. This swift and devastating action results in the abrupt eradication of agricultural systems globally, plunging everyone into starvation. Throughout her conquest, Hecate remains at Demeter's side, accompanying her until Zeus regains his senses and orders Hades to return Persephone. Unfortunately, Hades had already given the goddess of spring a cursed fruit, dividing her soul into two halves, the mortal and the immortal. The immortal part would reunite with Demeter, while the mortal part would periodically return to the underworld. Nevertheless, Hecate becomes Persephone's companion upon her return. The goddess of magic serves as a medium, accompanying her on the lengthy annual journeys to the underworld. This entire tale serves as a metaphor for the seasons, where spring, represented by Persephone, is stolen away by winter, symbolizing the cold wrath of the underworld, every year, only to return, eagerly awaiting its end once again. Hecate was often depicted as the consort of Chthonian Hermes in the cults of Thessalian Fairy and Eleusis. Both deities held leadership over the spirits of the deceased and were associated with the springtime return of Persephone. The sacred bond between Hecate and Hermes held significant importance in ancient times. This union was evident in the roadside shrines that dotted travel routes during antiquity. At these crossroads, images of Hecate as the protector of travelers stood alongside Hermes dedicated to Hermes. Both Hecate and Hermes served as guides for the departed. Hermes Chthonios guided souls down to the entrance of the underworld, while Hecate Chthonia led them back up as ghosts. Their relationship could be described as dualistic. They were both antagonistic and companionable towards each other. Hermes Chthonios restrained the shades of the dead, while Hecate Chthonia liberated them. Hecate garnered worship across various regions in Greece, with notable reverence in Byzantium, where she was believed to have forewarned of an impending attack from Macedonian forces by illuminating the sky. A significant mode of worship was the Daipnon, a meal exclusively dedicated to Hecate by the Greeks in Athens and neighboring areas. This ritual aimed to dispel household ill omens and appease the wrath of the malevolent spirits guarded against by Hecate. Her worship extended beyond Greek borders to include the Romans, with Lagina in Asian Turkey standing out as a vital sanctuary. Eunuchs and devotees alike honored the goddess in this sacred space. Following the Roman conquest of Greece, there was a blending of ideas and beliefs, including the amalgamation of mythologies. Greek religious practices persisted, along with its immortal deities, including Hecate. However, like many other gods, Hecate received a different name in Roman mythology. In Roman myth, Hecate was recognized as Trivia. The name translates to three roads, alluding to Hecate's authority over the crossroads in both the physical and subconscious realms. As society progresses, ancient ways persist and captivate contemporary minds. People maintain a fascination with figures from ancient mythology, incorporating their concepts and philosophies into modern belief systems, thereby birthing a new legacy. Hecate is no exception to this phenomenon. The goddess of magic remains a substantial deity in present-day religions and practices like Wicca and witchcraft. Thank you for joining us on our journey through the ancient tales of Greek mythology. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, May the stories of ancient myths continue to captivate and inspire.